Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to be speaking about a topic of education in Dale County. This is as 80 years ago on the RET beach in south of New Zealand. Myself, my wife Kelly. Not much to our name at this point in our lives, the one thing we had was a burning desire to succeed. <laughs> Fast forward eight years, and this is just today, the change. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have myself, Kelly, and our four year kids, all under the age of six. We now live on the same peninsula, and as you can see, share our lives with the lads and grow grazing dairy cows. This is where our burning desire to succeed has taken us, and why we choose the topic of wealth creation in dairy farming. Over the last 80 years, we have developed a farming enterprise which we own 50% of, which is called Paddock Farms Limited. Paddock Farms is a company based on cow ownership with all land rented. We farm 650 hectares in North Wales, consisting of two milking units, one unit based on the same peninsula milking a thousand cows, and the other unit located at Pensa Wallace by the Sequoia milking 400 cows. A total of 430 hectares is allocated to the milking cows with a strong emphasis on low cost milk production. All cows are calved in February, March and April to fully utilise grass. All of the land is allocated to young stock on winter feed. The aim is to create a very simple system that can be easily replicated. On my travels, I visited America, Ireland, Chile, Uruguay, New Zealand, and France. In order to establish and understand what the possible wealth creation targets are and how this has been done. The main objective of my study was to fully understand all the factors that are relevant to a successful farm business. I wanted to look at farm business structures that encourage and enable both expansion and rapid wealth creation. During my study on my travels, <coughs> three key points came very apparent if you have to succeed in wealth creation and dairy farming. And they are people, systems, and clarity. Let's break them up and go on through them one by one. First of all, we have people. One of the main things I observed early on on my travels was that every business person who wants to succeed must understand what people management skills. One farmer pointed out to me, every farmer's milking facilities, cows and grass, the one thing that makes them all different are the people on those farms and how they're managed. One key area in all this is choosing the right people in the beginning. And the two main things to look for in people when choosing, in my view, is ambition and attitude. Ambition. Ambition is crucial if you want people to understand your goals and ambitions. Ambition is energy and determination rolled into one. People are born with ambition. It's virtually impossible to install it into someone. Attitude. Attitude towards other people is critical. Positive attitudes are contagious. Attitude in the workplace. One bad, bad apple in a team, it's all it takes to stunt your business. Systems. On my travels, I met a lot of successful, very driven and ambitious people, in New Zealand especially. I have no doubt that we here in the UK industry have a large pool of people of the same calibre. <coughs> the big difference is the system. In New Zealand, for example, the system is very straightforward if you have drive and ambition. The career ladder is there for you to follow, all the way to potential farm ownership. This is where we fall behind in the UK. We have to attract well-educated youngsters into farming, targeting the higher educated and having a system to keep them moving forward in their career. I think in the past, farming has become an easy option to a large percentage of people. A fallback, a straightforward choice between stacking shelves in, in the local supermarket or working on the farm. I consider these people as blockers and strangling the industry. The system in New Zealand does not allow this to happen. It turns around like one big wheel. The young ones jump on, 
the successful ones stay on and jump off at the end, and the ones that fail simply fall off. Clarity. Be very clear on the outcomes you want in life and in business. This gives you the framework to do your evaluation. Clarity allows you to make quality decisions whether, and see opportunities where others do not. It helps you not take the wrong opportunity. When choosing an opportunity, you're also choosing not to take another. The world is full of opportunity. Key questions to evaluate opportunities are, will it lower the cost of my production? Increase my profits? Create more time? Create more opportunities in the future? Before you're able to take your business or your staff to a new level, you need to be able to lead yourself. This means modeling to your staff and your family a life that is desirable for, for them to pursue. Otherwise, why would they follow you? None of us are effective at our jobs working 16 hour days, six days a week. We need to allow the creative side of our brain an opportunity to speak. And this only comes when we are not heavily involved in routine process work. Activities such as exercise, networking, <coughs> reading, and personal development are very important. Those who are able to create opportunity continually invest in their own leadership development. Having a time away from the business gave me time to think. I had me thinking about things I did not realise were an issue until I was away. We had a system milking a large number of cows on one farm, performing averagely, and needed a high management input. And we were working cows plus people too hard. This did not hit home until I was standing listening to Dr. Goldie Jones, a large scale dairy farmer in Wisconsin, informing me of how important it is to look after the dairy cow. A few weeks later, I was having a conversation with Nye Murphy, an Irishman chair milking in Missouri, about once a day milking, the pros and cons of it, and how he was contemplating the strategic use of it in the harsh conditions of Missouri. A few weeks later, I arrived home, and after a few days back on the farm, it was crystal clear. Once a day milking was a no-brainer for us. Once a day milking is the one current innovation that offers the potential of lower cost of production without extra inputs, provided reasonable yields can be maintained. It's eliminated one whole milking operation per day, along with all the labour and cow walking them all, thereby continuing the steady increase in milking efficiencies over the past 100 years. We've implemented once a day milking from the start of calving this year on one of our farms. And the system is working very well. Cows are healthier and in better condition and the same goes for the people involved as well. I see huge potential in the UK for once a day milking especially as a useful tool to any farmer wishing to grow wealth in low-cost, pasture-based dairy. It allows you to milk more cows for less capital outlay, milk cows on less favourable, cheaper land, and it gives you much more flexibility with decisions. Would this change have been made if I hadn't been successful in gaining a Nuffield scholarship? Yes, probably in a few years' time. What my Nuffield scholarship enabled me to gain was a broader outlook on things pushing the more comfortable and rigid thinking to one side and actually seeing things a lot clearer quicker. On the turn from the various countries of it still became more and more apparent to me that the UK is a fantastic place to produce low-cost milk. We can actually grow grass as well, but not better than any other country in the world. The opportunities in the UK at present are limitless and will be, in my view, for the foreseeable future. The most important aspect of growing a dairy farm business is without doubt people. The success of farm business growth will depend wholly on being able to match these opportunities with the right people. We are also very fortunate to be producing milk in an, in an unrestricted environment. Unlike Ireland, where milk quota and the threat of super levy is a constant threat. Set-up cost for new dairy units, especially if once a day milking is employed, is fairly moderate. And, all, and cows bred to the grazing systems are easily obtained nowadays. 
different story to 10 years ago where it's virtually <coughs> impossible to find cows due to the grazing systems. Being a low cost producer in an industry very dominated by high cost farms is also to our advantage. Creating a robust business, keeping costs to a minimum, will make you a lot less exposed to the volatility of the markets going forward. Interestingly, a percentage of producers in New Zealand are taking their eye off the ball and, and adopting European and American techniques and creating a high cost system in a country renowned for its low cost production. An important aspect and success of acquiring multiple dairy farms in different locations in different countries is adapting a system to the location and climate and not being too rigid in thinking one size fits all. <clears throat> Before I feel we had reached the crossroads, where next? We have made huge progress in our lives, both personal and in business, but I knew more could be achieved. The question was how? There was a need to refocus and evaluate in what direction we needed to go. Ladies and gentlemen, now I know exactly where we are going, and it's all down to my scholarship. Over the course of the next 10 years, my goal is to create a similar system to New Zealand, where we are able to attract current farmers and landowners into a farming partnership with ourselves, and offer young people who have the required qualities to succeed an opportunity to progress. This would allow wealth creation for us and other people. My passion is people, and that is how wealth creation in dairy farming or any type of farming is achieved. Finally, I'd like to thank the Training Trust for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I've thoroughly enjoyed the past 18 months, the honour of becoming an upfield trained scholar, the privilege of travelling the world, interacting with truly amazing people, and being able to take time out to accomplish all this has given me a completely different outlook on life. Also, I'd like to thank Kelly and the kids for being so encouraging, supportive and patient during the last 18 months. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening.